Hi Starshine, and welcome to Celestial Cabaret, where we help circus and burlesque performers improve their skills and storytellings on and off stage. In case you don't know me, I'm Ellie Cerceau, one of the Celestial Cabaret founders and a certified exercise physiologist. I love sharing shame-free fitness with a side of rhinestones, and today I'm going to talk to you about the importance of warming up before you perform. Why is it important to warm up before your act? Well, we wanna prepare our bodies for whatever we're gonna ask it to do. Like, you warm up before you rehearse, before you work out, and before you actually perform your act, it should be no different. I'm gonna share my tips and tricks on how to warm up backstage with very little space to do so. If that sounds like fun and you're interested in learning more on how to improve as a performer or a storyteller on stage, why don't you go ahead and click that subscribe button. Before we get started, I am repping Ginger Snaps Burlesque today. If you don't know who she is, you are seriously missing out. You can check her out at inspirationalchubbyperson.com or gingersnapsburlesque.com. Well, this is not where I'm going to be leading a warm up, so let's hop over to my studio and get started. Welcome to my studio. So you agree that warming up is a good thing, but you're not sure where to start. I'm here to help. Let's think about preparing your body for whatever you're about to ask it to do. So that means getting the blood flowing, getting your muscles nice and awake, and making sure your joints are lubricated and ready for ranges of motion. Today I am going to use an example of a warm up I might do for a cheer act. That's better. I'm going to do this warm up in the smallest space possible. So that way you can see and imagine how it'll translate to backstage when you don't have a lot of room. Hi from VoiceOver Ellie. Let's go ahead and get the blood flowing. I'm just going to show you a couple circles through all the different joints in my body, but feel free to do these for up to 30 seconds in each direction. It really depends on how your body's feeling. The point of this is to get the blood flowing, introduce some movement into your body, and just see how you feel. Especially, this is important if you had to drive a long way or sit into traffic to get to your venue. You can see I start with my hands and my wrists, I work my way all the way up my arms, and then start working my way down my hips, and my legs, all the way down to my feet and ankles. Next, I like to let these movements get a little looser and maybe a little flowy. This is especially really good if my act is particularly slinky. You can do some circles with your head and your neck and your shoulders. Of course, only move in a range of motion that's comfortable for you. So if that arching backwards does not feel good, just make it a little smaller. And then I like to add some shifts and sways. And then I always start to work with some body rolls. I work on body rolls in both directions and really focus on waking up each vertebra. I start very segmented with the head chest, then hips, and then I get a little loose and wiggly with it. And then make sure you do these in both directions. So we start from the head down and from the hips up. You'll probably notice a different sensation in each of these. One of them is going to feel a lot weirder than the other. And you can even do some side-to-side -side weight shifts or maybe even some side-to-side -side body waves. Starting from the bottom or from the head. The one starting from the head really makes me feel like a snake. Now let's do some leg swings. This really helps me warm up my hips and hamstrings, especially if I'm doing anything splits focus. These are loose. They are not about maximum range of motion. It's all about getting that movement in the body. Then we can go into some squats behind the chair or squats on the chair, just standing and sitting down. We've done more mobilization and kind of waking up the body, so let's get that heart rate up a little more. Remember, you can do all of these for about 30 seconds each. If you're wearing heels, it's important to add some calf raises and make sure your ankles are ready to be in that releve position. 
When you do your calf raises, push into the big toes of your feet to help keep your ankles parallel. Next is toy soldiers or batmonts. So where our leg swings before were really loose, these are a lot more controlled and engaging the core. Now we have some chair waves. You can do these in a crab or a plank position. It's up to your comfort level and focus on getting those body waves in that position. To help warm up our core, we can do some chair leg lifts, sitting on the chair, finding a nice comfortable position and then hover one or both of the legs. And you can pull one or both to the chest and lower. Finally, it is good to activate with some hinges or deadlifts, sending the hips straight back. And if you want to warm up your shimmies while you're at it, you absolutely can. Do add that little hip wiggle and you can lean on the chair for support. And now that our body is all nice and warm, if you're gonna be doing any flexibility focused movements in your act, you can go ahead and add some stretches here specifically for the moves you're working on or the uh, problem areas that you might have. You know, that sticky side. My calves are insanely tight all the time, so I always have to add some good calf stretches. And with that, you're all warmed up and ready to hit the stage. Thanks for joining.